I just wanted to say good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all feeling well today amidst all the shifting of new normals that we have to get used to. Uh, I'm Mickey Campo, I'm the program manager here at Innovation Guelph. Um, well, not particularly here since we're all working remotely. Uh, but for those of you who are new to IG, I just wanted to let you know briefly a little bit about us. Um, IG is a group of one of a group of regional innovation centers located throughout Ontario. And while we do service Guelph, and the Southern Ontario catchment areas, we also have programs and services that support innovative and scalable companies of all sizes throughout Canada. So I welcome you to check out our website for more information on us. I'm not going to talk any more about that right now. Um, our website is uh, innovationwealth.ca. Um, I really want to get focused on helping you today. That's why we're doing this series. Uh, so today I am pleased to introduce you to Brad Fitzsimmons and Brad is a business owner an entrepreneur and a valued member of our talented mentor team here at IG. Um, as an unbreakable optimist, his experience allows him to see opportunities where others only see problems. So he's here today to challenge you to see past the COVID-19 epidemic and determine what the future of your business looks like. Uh, and before I hand things over directly to Brad, just a couple housekeeping things to go over with you. Um, this session is being recorded. Uh, it will be live on our YouTube channel uh, within the next 48 hours. We've muted all of you. So uh, you can either have your videos on or off, but I do believe um, we have, we're not looking at any of them. So off is fine. Uh, that's really up to you. If you'd like to answer a question, answer a question, ask a question, uh, then you can raise your hand. Use the raise your hand option. It's at the lower right corner of your screen. Um, or you can use the chat window and you can either type to me, Mickey, or I uh, type to everyone and um, I will capture those and when the time is right to, um, to, to interject, then we will get your questions answered by Brad. So uh, throughout the presentation, uh, feel free to put your hand up or ask the questions in chat, uh, but really 2.30 to 3.30 is Brad's presentation and then we're gonna open the floor a little bit for discussion, conversation and a more of a formal Q&A period. Uh, you're either welcome to stay for that last half hour or you're uh, welcome to leave and get on with your day. That's entirely up to you. But that first hour um, of this session is Brad sharing information with you guys. So um, if any of you have any questions at this moment in time, um, feel free to put your hand up. Otherwise, I'm going to hand things over to Brad to get started. I don't, I don't see any hands, so I'm going to hand this over to Brad now. Okay. Brad, please get started. Thank you, Mickey. Mickey, you can hear me okay? Yep, I hear you just fine. Good stuff. Hello, everyone. My name is Brad Fitzsimmons, and as Mickey said, yes, I, I'm uh, one of the mentors here at, uh, at Innovation Guelph, and uh, I'm very proud of, of the fact that this team has uh, put together this event. I think it's so critical, and you'll see this throughout my presentation here, um, about relying on your community through times like this. Um, myself, uh, you know, I went through this. I was the CEO of a worldwide company in 2008 through the economic crisis, and I'm sorry, the financial crisis, and uh, that was something I didn't do particularly well. Uh, I buried my head in the sand a lot of the time, and as a result, um, you know, it, it, it caused me to make some mistakes that, that I wish I didn't make. Um, and so that's really the virtue of this today and, and why I'm so proud of the team here at, at Innovation Guelph for putting this together because this all had to come together pretty quickly um, and everything's happening so quickly and uh, people are now having to work you know, uh, together collaboratively but in different spaces, which is stuff that everybody on this call is probably going through right now. Um, uh, but certainly, um, uh, you know, I'm very appreciative of this venue to have this conversation. And one of the big takeaways from today is going to be making sure that you are doing the same thing. Take the information from these, the, these types of sessions and share them with people, particularly people you haven't heard from in a little while that are, that are business owners, because um, it's a tough time. And there's nobody that understands a business owner like another business owner and it's really easy to get uh, tunnel vision uh, at this time and we, we really don't want that i think it's really critical to kind of step out of yourself periodically and and maybe try to um 
share some of your thoughts and your wisdom. And even if it's not somebody in your industry, um, think about that as well. But we'll get into all of that. So uh, without further ado, we'll, we'll go into a slide deck here um, where we can go through and, and uh, just show you folks some of the stuff that we've been working on. And I'm just going to move something out of the way here. Um, uh, so for those of you, I'm not sure uh, how many of you are uh, Innovation Guelph um, uh, members that are, that are part of our client base. Um, I imagine quite a few are. Uh, I'd be really interested to see at the end of this how many uh, folks actually uh, are Innovation Guelph clients. But if, if you're not, um, or if you are, um, uh, certainly it's a, it's a great place to do business. And I definitely wish that I would have leveraged these types of things better when I first started a few of my uh, companies. And, and for those of you that are in the program, um, kudos to you because uh, uh, it's, it's a great place to get resources and information. <clears throat> so without further ado, um, I, I, what we don't want to do today is get into what I see is potentially an opportunity um, in a crisis. And for a lot of people, um, you know, this is something that, that, that's going to sort of challenge their thought process. Um, and largely the reason for it is that um, people don't think all that well necessarily under, under duress sometimes, even business owners who probably handle stress better than most. So the first thing I want everybody to do, and I can't see whether you're going to do it or not, but I want everybody to just take a big deep breath. And I swear to you, in 2008, from about August to February of 2009, I don't think I took a deep breath like that. And, and the reason why I suggest we do that is because we need to slow down and start to think a little bit. Um, at the end of this meeting, we really want you to do is walk away with some information that you can have for yourself as well as uh, share with your peers and believe it or not the idea of sitting in on these types of meetings um, you're probably ahead of 99 percent of your peers and your competition because you are doing these types of things as i said i'm i'm kind of the a good use taste uh, use test case um, uh, in 2008 um, i didn't do some of these things and um, it just meant that not only did i not survive that well but i didn't thrive in that opportunity either and part of that was i just didn't take a moment to to step back talk to some peers talk to some friends um talk to people in other industries and look for the opportunity and part of that is just uh, to get out of yourself for a little bit so um kudos to everybody who's in on this session i see that we're continuing to click in here um which is great um uh, Oh, we're not clicking through here, but that's okay. We'll... So, <clears throat> uh, how I hope you feel after today. This is important. Uh, I want to make sure that um, that everybody has something they take away from this. We're we're really busy right now, working what I call in your business, and I want to make sure that uh, people get a lot out of this and work on their business a little bit. Um, and, uh, you know, because you are spending the time here today, we want to make sure that after this, you feel empowered to make some decisions. We're going to get into the, uh, the government funding and how that can affect you and some of the user cases that I've already experienced um, by working with uh, some, of the, some of the folks at Innovation Guelph and, and outside in my network, people who have called me and reached out to me, which is something that I encourage people to do always. Um, we want to make sure that you get started or you feel like you've started on a COVID uh, custom uh, response plan. Um, I've built out a little uh, uh, COVID response plan canvas, similar to a business canvas that everybody can work on. And it's an amazing thing if, even if you did it with a peer and work through that canvas, it's going to force you to ask a lot of the questions that, that sort of need to be answered. Um, over the next um, few days, few weeks, few months. Uh, 
You're going to feel that you're ready to ask for help and to speak to experienced people, mentors, and advisors. Uh, this is critical. Um, if you are the smartest person in the room or if you are the smartest person on uh, and most experienced person on your uh, Zoom call, that's your fault. Um, you should be surrounding yourself right now with people that are smarter than you are um, and have more experience than you are and seek those people's that people out. This is one of the opportunities. People are going to be incredibly generous right now um, with their time. Uh, and uh, I've already seen that and, and I'm personally doing that as well. If somebody's calling me and reaching out, I'm there to talk to them. And some of them are phone calls with tears in them, uh, but they oftentimes are turning into some pretty excited, um, almost jubilant conversations about the opportunities that exist. Um, we want you to feel like you're ready to ask more questions. And there's, the, there's some information at the end of this as well for where you can go to ask some more questions um, once we're done here today. So we're not just gonna leave you in the lurch. Uh, we're not gonna you know, turn up a bunch of grass here and then hope you search through it yourself. Uh, Innovation Guelph has, has thought this through and is going to have some, some solutions for you as far as uh, being able to chat with people. Um, in my opinion, the other piece of this is that COVID-19 is going to be something of a badge of honor for business owners uh, and an incredible learning thing that you will have gone through. If, if you see that as an opportunity, I hope you do. Um, if your business is going to survive and thrive, um, coming through this and the decisions that you've had to make, I mean, this is what leadership is all about. Um, and so that is something that uh, we're, you know, more and more people are getting into understanding that this is a real learning opportunity. And it's something that I'm incredibly enthusiastic about. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be so enthusiastic about it because at the end of the day, we don't know what's down the road four or five months. Um, but I got to tell you, the enthusiasm is still there and, and it's buoyed by talking to other business owners. I, I never get off a call so far where I felt worse than I did when I. Um, uh, when I started that call, which is great. And the last piece here we want to make sure um, that you're going to take away today is that you're ready to pay it forward. So these types of conversations, I think you're sort of getting the idea and the concept of what I'm going to be talking about today is it's, it's a lot of community-based things and reaching out and paying it forward is absolutely part of that situation. Uh, whether you've seen the movie or not, I'm sure we've uh, we've all done things or we've we've heard the concept before. But what you're learning here, it is absolutely critical that you get viral with this. That you and no pun intended there, but uh, get viral with the information because what I'm seeing right now, I've spoken to over 150 some odd businesses now in the last 12 days. Um, and uh, I can tell you the biggest challenge that I see that's going to happen is not that our government isn't stepping up to the plate. It's that business owners have a bit of paralysis and that um, they have partial information and they're not talking to each other enough. Um, and that's critical. Uh, and particularly talking to people outside of industry. So this is a great opportunity to cross industries and go to somebody who you've always wanted to talk to and say, hey, what are you doing? And it's amazing how you're going to get emails back and phone calls back. It really, really is. So uh, LinkedIn is a great thing as well. Reaching out to people right now saying, you know, you seem like you have a, a mature business or um, I'm interested in what's going on with your industry right now. Um, can you talk to me about the information you have? And, and you'll get a response because particularly in Canada here, you're really starting to see this Team Canada mentality happen and Innovation Guelph is part of Team Canada. So. Um, what we're going to cover today, uh, so as it looks like the final people have clicked on, we probably I think we fit our, our numbers for, for the meeting, so this is the perfect time to show this. So what we're going to cover today is what I call a mature mindset, uh, a process for, um, uh, for assessing crisis, um, uh, assessing opportunity, um, the new habit reality that's going to come with that opportunity, uh, the Ontario government programs, uh, the federal government programs, leveraging these government programs for your business, uh, and uh, the funding successes that we've had so far, uh, and uh, programs that we're working on. So that's that's the the large part of what we're covering today. Um, 
so buckle up and if you uh if you have a coffee or uh um, i actually had somebody in a zoom meeting the other day that was smoking on the meeting which was an issue <laughs> An interesting thing to have uh, uh, somebody smoking in a meeting. It's been a while since I've been in a meeting that uh, somebody's smoking a cigarette. So uh, all these new things that are happening with uh, with COVID is certainly creating some interesting experiences. And, and I'm all the micro things that you're hearing from people and the things that that this thing has done to them uh, and the way that they've dealt with it. It's it's really uh, been been encouraging. And, and then sometimes it's it's really challenging. So. Um, so the, the the mature mindset <clears throat> so my theory for running businesses and if anybody that's out there knows me um this is something that i adapted just because i try to get things as simple as possible um i'm not an mba so i don't have my mba um you know i went to university at st mary's university in halifax i played hockey out there um i did not graduate um at the top of my class um but I've run businesses all around the world in 37 countries. And I always find when people try to make things complicated for me, um, I struggle. And uh, what works for me is taking things that I can relate to and um, I can relate to what maturity means. Uh, certainly when I was a, an initial business owner, um, uh, you know, my first business I started when I was 13, I was a very immature business owner at that point. But even in my 20s, um, you know, I just didn't have the maturity level. And a lot of the maturity that I've gained, I've gained through pain. Um, but it's, it's a theory that I apply to pretty much everything that I, that I do in business. And I have a process that I go through um, where we start with defining it, then we fund it, we plan it, we communicate it, we measure it, we manage it. Um, and then we repeat the cycle and, and do that for absolutely everything, whether it's an HR project, uh, getting financing, um, uh, a software project, uh, um, standing up another arm of the business, it's the same. But what I like to do is think of the business as a person. And I now have two young children, so hopefully they won't come running in here at some point, uh, and, uh, or you won't hear screaming because I think they're about to go for a walk or something like that. I think my wife, is, uh, who's a school teacher and starting to work again now, uh, she is um, going to be taking them out, but um, the maturing concept worked even better for me once I had children because what I understood was um, my kids aren't always growing this way, but they you can really see it when they're not growing in their mind. And so for me, uh, this this um, metaphor for me works really really well. Um, what I like to think of, particularly in these scenarios, uh, maturity is the ability to respond to the environment, being aware of the correct time and location to behave and knowing when to act according to the circumstances and the culture of the society that one lives in. And so if you take that and you extrapolate it out for COVID-19, uh, this is the situation that we're in. And the mature leaders, are going to recognize the situation and we're not going to complain about it and we're going to look for the opportunity. Now, I couldn't have done that um, even 15 years ago. Uh, even 10 years ago, it was a challenge. So it, it's something that you have to call upon other experienced people. That's part of why I ask you to, to draw other people in and help you see uh, the forest for the trees. Maturing is something that everybody and every business should always be doing. My mother is uh, 75 years old and she's a whiz on the iPad. And, uh, you know, she finds out everything about the world on that iPad. She knew nothing about technology five years ago. And it constantly amazes me how much she knows. So she's maturing in that way. She's not growing, um, you know, uh, and, and so what I find is that businesses are scaling or they're growing those are typically periods of time when we're doing things um, in order to scale or grow um, but maturity should be present at all times and you'll recognize it if it isn't you know you'll recognize if somebody um, or a business isn't maturing because it'll start to be challenged uh, by the market and so these types of times are times for mature leaders and mature businesses to, to move themselves forward and to, to do mature things. 
Um, and what I've experienced is that once people start seeing themselves as not having to be the next coming of Richard Branson or Steve Jobs, but just maturing, not perfection, just progress, then all of a sudden things become more attainable and they start taking, taking better charge of situations. And particularly like this, people will get very overwhelmed. I'm sure many of you know people who are struggling with this situation. I have fo had phone calls with at least 10 people who are in their basements and telling me they're literally curled up in a ball and uh, they don't know what to do. And my message to them is just one step at a time, one day at a time, let's move forward, let's do the next right thing. You don't have to be the next coming of Richard Branson. You don't have to be Elon Musk. You just have to be good to yourself first and making sure that you're taking care of yourself. And then that gives you the maturity to mature your business and, and move from there. So this is something that's, um, that I feel very strongly about. Different people may have different ways of explaining it, but I think with COVID-19, the thing that really resonates with me and the challenges that I had in 2008 was that um, the immaturity in me, even at that time, was that I didn't do enough. I, I, I wasn't as present as I should have been. And as a result, I made non-decisions. And that's not the mature thing to do. Um, the mature thing to do here is to do the best you can with as much information as you can. And if you're a business leader or a business owner, we're always making decisions about things where we have 50% information, 60% information, 40% information, the best we can do is just get more information, um, as much information as possible in order to make decisions. So that's what I wanted to leave everybody with is that at the end of the day, a big part of being mature is recognizing immaturity. And if you have paralysis by analysis right now or information overload, that's part of what we're gonna to accomplish today is get, empower you to start making some decisions for your business. And some of those decisions are gonna be really tough. And, uh, but that's why you're sitting in the chair and you're making these calls. Um, so I'm just gonna click through here to the next slide. Uh, so you're the business leader. You need to honestly assess your circumstances. Are you in the right mental state right now to assess your business? Be honest with yourself and your business, uh, just as we do with, with uh, our children, if you have children. Um, set them up to succeed, but don't hold them back if they're ready. And what I mean by that is I'm trying to apply this to your business. So if your business is ready to go right now and you're not just in survival mode, um, you actually are feeling pretty good, you have good cash flow, your business is still flowing, there's great opportunity out there. You take a look at what your competition's doing and there's gonna be lots of opportunity for what you're doing, but you have to assess that business. You have to assess and understand what it is that, um, that your business is capable of. And sometimes that's difficult to do. And that's why, once again, I ask people to call on mentors. If we already have mentors in place, it's an absolutely great time to reach out to them. Um, if you don't have a mentor in place, um, then it's a great time to find one. Uh, if you are going to move forward, you know, looking for gaps and and uh, then trying to fill them. Uh, and we'll get into a little bit more about that because with all the financing and funding that's coming from the different um, government structures, um, the government, I assure you, is not doing that just so that businesses um, die out or just survive. The hope is that they're going to use these revenues to thrive and to really move their business forward. So um, it's important that, you know, once again, we go back to making sure you're taking good care of yourself right now, getting yourself in the right mental state, because if you're not there, then your decision making isn't that strong. And that's once again, why we want to call upon a mentor or somebody to work with um, uh, that will help you through that situation. So the, pro, the process that, that I go through um, and that I talk to, to business owners about 
um, when they're going through this process, and you've heard me start to talk about this a little bit, is um, the process for assessing the crisis. I've already talked about it. Starting to think of yourself first. What do you need? Take care of yourself. Ask for help. Then we can start thinking about what the business needs and uh, that honest, mature assessment. So once again, you know, if you're sitting at your computer right now, just take a minute. We'll do another deep breath here and really think about your business right now and what stage it's at. And this is a big moment for people. I wish I would have done this. I wish somebody would have sat me down and said, you know, Brad, just take a moment and think. It's a, it's a bit of a lost art. So I'm going to do another deep breath. Might seem corny to some of you, but um, breathing really helps me. So Like I really hope there's a lot of wind flowing around uh, Guelph right now because it is important that we we think these things through and we try to clear our minds. So hopefully some of you are starting to write down that honest, mature assessment of your business. And, and that part of that can be that, that the business um, is in real trouble and um, that financially you're, you have a real challenge coming to you. And that's okay. That's that's the honest assessment. Um, I'm I'm going to say suggest to you, and you'll see uh, as we speak about it later that most people are going to, particularly in Canada, um, most of us are going to go into this survival mode. Um, I'm hoping as a result of this and other sessions that are going on through Innovation Guelph, that we're going to motivate you to get into the thrive category here eventually. Um, because I, I really do think that um, if you talk to somebody, you'll find that there is actually opportunity. You just can't see it because your head's down working in your business right now. So, you know, spend a little bit of time as well thinking about mentors and people that you'd like to, to reach out to. Somebody maybe in your LinkedIn list or, or, you know, maybe it's a business owner that you never thought you could have a relationship with. And just reach out and ask about them because uh, and what they're doing and, and what they're suggesting. I think you're going to be surprised at the at the response. And because of uh, the COVID nineteen situation, I have been following the numbers worldwide. I don't pretend to be a numbers expert on this or anything else, um, uh, but it, it feels as though it looks as though that um, you know the. The gold standard would be sort of South Korea's model. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I would suggest that Canada is doing a pretty good job um, with our social distancing or physical distancing, I guess we're calling it now, um, and staying home because the numbers seem to not be going uh, too wild. But we are sort of um, in, in getting sort of lulled into a sense of security because the US situation seems to be so challenging um, that uh, that we kind of look at ourselves um, uh, as, as, as doing a really great job. But I, certainly, it seems like our numbers generally aren't jumping. And, and those are things we need to be looking at because what I'm looking for in the Thrive situation is um, what is going, when is that turnaround going to happen? Um, and, and when are we going to start having uh, normal business opportunities again? And, and maybe the new normal is not going to be anything like, um, you know, we or we may not recognize it uh, in the same way. So once again, talking to people outside of industry about when we think uh, the turnaround is going to happen, that's that's going to be um, a, a very important thing. So. Um, uh, and, and, and I guess for some of you talking about when the pain's going to start and, and, um, and, and, and is there um, uh, an immediate risk. So what that does, and probably everybody who's ever been in a presentation ever has seen this fork in the road um, <laughs> slide. And I actually think I have another one in here too. Um, but really you are in, in, at a fork in the road. At the end of the day, you're in this, all of us, we can sort of um, bring it down to 
a die, survive, thrive situation here. Um, and everybody's going to have to sort of make that decision for themselves. This is the business that we've chosen to be in, that you've chosen. Um, you're, you're in it for a reason. And, um, and presumably you entered into it with, with a lot of thought. So you've got some decisions to make. So once again, back to the maturity concept, um, it, it, it might not be time to go any deeper um, and begin dissolving your business. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I am definitely a glass half, glass half full guy. Um, but there was a, um, some businesses that I was in that if I look back in 2008, that was probably a good time to wind them down. And, I, and that would have been a good decision. That would have been the mature decision to make at that time. And for a lot of us, particularly I find here in Canada, our businesses are our babies and um, there's a lot of pride in them, but there's no shame in making a decision, a business decision um, that given the current climate, that, that your business can't continue. And um, that's the mature thing to do. And uh, I don't wanna be the person that's bringing that to you, but it's something you should think about and, and of course talk to somebody about in advance. For most of Canada, what I'm seeing so far, uh, of those all those calls, I'd say the majority of people are getting ready to hunker down and survive. And uh, to some extent, I think that's a bit of a mistake as well. Um, most businesses that I'm speaking to, and I can, uh, part of the reason I was so excited that um, Innovation Guelph was doing this is my throat was getting pretty raspy from, or my voice was getting raspy from uh, speaking to so many people. Um, and what I was finding is that most people were at least starting the conversation with, well, you know, if the government money comes, then I'm just going to sock it aside. And, um, you know, and then uh, if worst case scenario happens, um, that, that I'm good. And I would start to ask them questions about their business and their competition and their marketplace. And before you knew it, they were thinking about what they could do with that money. Um, and starting to invest in their business. And this is another thing about uh, the maturity of, of somebody's business is a mature business, a mature leader, uh, in my opinion, um, they think of their business as an asset. Um, you can be in love with your business, um, but you should also think of it as an asset and be prepared to invest in it. And if you're somebody who, what I call, uh, owns a job, um, who is really cash flow driven and is not considering um, the investment in their business, then, then investment to thrive is going to be a challenging concept. Um, but, you know, that's, that's maybe a shift you can't make. And maybe in that case, it's just time to hunker down and survive. Because if you're not ready to, to think through some of those investment concepts, then it's going to be challenging to change your mindset altogether. Um, but as we've spoken about, and I'll talk about it all through this, decision to do nothing um, and, or doing nothing is not a decision, right? And that's, that's an immature decision. So the, the, the government funding is there to help us survive and get ready for the future. I assure you that the, the government is not sitting there saying, well, you know, I'm, we're going to do this and um, we're just hoping that uh, Canadians are going to just survive through this. No, I mean, part of what happens when these things happen, and I go back to 2008, there was a lot of pruning of trees. There were a lot of businesses that went by the wayside and gave way to businesses that had a stronger plan. And um, I think that, that, that everybody on this call um, should at least consider being that stronger business. Um, you're the business leader. Uh, this is absolutely your decision. Um, we can use the government programs for all types of things. And as I said, I think a lot of you are, are really excited to hear about what some of the government programs are and some of the use cases that we've already had so far. So assess your own opportunity. <clears throat> if you've gone through the first two stages and you see an opportunity in the market, this is a great time for your business. It really is. Um, and, and But this requires you to take the, uh, the, the blinders off and, and start to really focus in on, on what's possible here. Um, what's your market doing? Uh, what's your market gonna look like? What's your competition doing? Are there acquisition 
opportunities um, that are going to happen. We're going to see a ton of mergers and acquisitions is my thought in the next year. Um, and in talking to the law firms, they're ramping up for that very thing. There are, there's lots of bankruptcies going on as well. There's a lot of those types of negotiations. Large companies are having really hard decisions to make. The smaller, more nimble small businesses can really benefit from that. What are the risks though? You know, like what, what are your risks to, to investing? And, and I love this Jim Carrey quote, uh, you know, that, that he says, um, you know, you, you can fail at, at doing things halfway as well or not doing what you love. So you may as well really go for it because at least then, you know, you gave it your best shot. So yes, there are going to be risks for this. I'm not sitting here suggesting that um, we're standing here suggesting that anybody not go for it. Um, what I am saying is that uh, uh, those risks are probably worth taking. And if we go back to a couple slides ago, you have to be the one um, that, that, that maturely considers that situation. Have a plan, work the plan, adapt the plan. I can't encourage you enough. And that's why I'm providing this um, in the business canvas for COVID, um, which I've changed some of the, the tabs in it to accommodate. Um, and start to model some forecasts, like do that work, uh, especially if you're not super busy working on other things. This is where we want to make sure that we start to get into some new habits and do some planning. And, and this is the, um, an example of, of the thing that I've changed um, in the, uh, in the uh, business planning canvas. Um, so I'm calling it the, the COVID custom COVID response plan. So if we start from the top left and we and we scoot across here, um, you're going to see you know normal stuff like uh, problems and um, uh, and solutions. But these are the problems that are going to exist right now. What your solutions are, um, your value proposition during COVID, what you're going to be, um, what you could possibly be coming up with, uh, the unfair advantage that you could have has COVID created a market for you. Uh, that's something to think about. We, uh, there's um, a piece that we're not going to cover today, but we can certainly uh, do it at a later date. We have a bunch of our clients that have um, that have applied through uh, a procure the procurement site for the federal government. So if you can reuse or use your services and um, the, the government is prepared to partner with you, um, and there's been a couple of great cases out of Innovation Guelph of, um, of businesses that, that have already signed letters of intent um, and are moving in that direction. What's then, then I get into the, the yellows are things that you don't have to think about right away, but they are important. So the value proposition after COVID, you need to start thinking about that a little bit. Um, delighting your customers and your, and, and your clients. This is an amazing time to show the value of your brand. I have a branding guy that I work with um, as well. And, you know, he was in the same mindset of, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I don't know what to do. I'm going to send my clients a letter and say, well, hang on to me. No, this is, this is a great time to show the value of your business and your business values. Um, reach out to your clients. See if they want to have a conversation about their business. Um, I'm having great success and, and a great enjoyment in having those conversations um, where my clients aren't expecting um, me to reach out to them because they think I've got my own things going on. And, and fortunately, I have the, the availability to do it. The key metrics, I'm not super worried about them because they're changing all the time. Um, but then, um, you know, so, so that's not critical and, and we're, it's going to be hard to nail down some metrics for a little while because we don't know what's happening with COVID, but starting to think about that. The government partnership is a huge thing, right? So, uh, and I've just jotted down some ones because I've already done this a bunch of times with clients, 19, as a matter of fact. Um, you know, these are some of the, the programs, but I'm going to go through them in greater detail. Um, so, uh, thinking about now you have a, your business now has to have a very strong relationship with your government. We always should. This is, this is actually government partnership is something that's in every one of my, um, uh, of my canvases that I do with my, my own business and as well as anybody else. Um, but because you, you need to understand what your relationship is with the government, but now more than ever, you need to understand what this is all about. 
Um, so deferring personal tax, corporate tax, HST deferment, um, the 75% wage subsidy, the $40,000 loan, the under $100,000 BDC loan, um, and then the self-employed subsidy. These are my terms that I use with clients uh, as opposed to the, the government terms that I use, but we'll, we'll focus on those a little bit later on. And then your cost structures. So like your fixed and variable cost structures and then your revenue streams, one of which may be the government, right? So um, once we go through this, the business owner tends to think differently. And it, you know, it can take a 15 minutes, it can take an hour and a half, it can take two hours. You can do it on your own, but once again, I really encourage you doing it with somebody else to pick a buddy and, and do it with. And if you have a mentor, if you have an advisory board, this is a great exercise to go through. And uh, Innovation Guelph is gonna share this out with everybody so that uh, everybody has a copy of it. Whenever I talk too much, the uh, slides slide up. Looks like we have a line across our screen somehow. Um, so in order to move forward, um, one of the challenges that I'm seeing, um, and, and particularly I get the folks that go from being, you know, really upset and, and really concerned to jubilant, is they then go through another little hollow where they say, you know, Brad, what's required here? I don't necessarily have these skills. And that's really common. Like what I see and what I wasn't good at in my 20s, I'm now 46, um, and it was, uh, uh, having the habits to work on my business. And those weren't habits that were present all the time. And I was really good for me. If it wasn't making money, um, then, um, it wasn't something that I was super interested in. And so as a result, those habits, and they were rewarded, but other parts of businesses suffered. So then what I did was I surrounded myself with, with people that could help me with these things. Um, right now, just the working on the business piece is going to be uh, something that people are going to have to think about and start to create some new habits, but what better time? Um, if your business isn't active right now, you're doing nothing but working on the business, attending things like this, watching the prime minister, you know, every day, um, fretting about things. This is uh, like starting to create new, new habits on working on your business is, is a, this is a great time to do it. Um, it is an aggressive strategy. So when you tell people or when you start, you know, communicating that, that your business is going to start to go for it, you may need to temper that a little bit because um, people are going to think, oh, that's, that's really aggressive. Um, back to, you know, watching the market and what's going to happen and because this is all uncharted territory and why I think survival is going to be the most common thing that people do. But if they start to people start to stretch a little bit and start to develop new habits working on the business literally because i know a lot of people are working from home most people on this call might be small medium-sized business owners you're probably pretty accustomed to working from home but my share and I, I just did a video about working from home i get up at three o'clock in the morning um, because my i do this all the time um, my children are young they're under five um, five and 20 months. So when they get up at seven o'clock in the morning, um, it's game on. And so I get up at three. So I get uh, you know, four hours to myself to get some things done. And uh, then I literally schedule um, the on the business things that I need to get done. It, it needs to be in your schedule, uh, time to work on the business. Um, and, uh, and particularly if, if your normal business operations aren't, aren't occurring the way that they usually are. Um, schedule meetings with experienced advisors, set yourself up for success, um, investing in your business. You heard me talk about this earlier, the concept of um, owning your business, not a job. Um, this um, is something that I feel very strongly about. Even if you have a lifestyle business, if you're working as hard as you're working, you know, you, you should be thinking of your business as an asset and investing in it constantly, maturing your business. Um, and as a tool for people to do that, start with exit. So start thinking about what your business looks like when you leave it. 
if you can't conceptualize that idea of what your business looks like at exit, um, then you, you're, you're probably falling into the category or might be falling into the category of owning a job. And I have had billion dollar um, uh, customers and clients that, um, that own billion dollar companies um, that I would say owned jobs. They'll never be able to sell it and they don't want to sell it. And so as a result, everything that they do is a challenge. Um, investments come hard um, because if you know if you think of your your business like you did of a job that you had uh, you know if I'm making sixty thousand dollars a year and I'm, I'm working at the government um, I don't have to invest in anything uh, you know every pencil I get every eraser I get everything is there for me um, and uh, you know that's not something that that they have to worry about so um, that's that's important to me that people start to think of that uh, so now on to the <clears throat> to the government programs. Regardless of your pathway uh, forward, there are government programs here to help you and we want people to choose their own adventure and make sure people understand that you're not alone in this situation. You have Innovation Guelph, hopefully you have your peer groups, hopefully you're all going to reach out to people today. Like it, it, literally, uh, I've created this presentation um, last night and a few days before and um, uh, then the Prime Minister came on today, and so did uh, the Deputy Prime Minister. And what is and, and everybody is saying, we need to cooperate on this. It's not a government thing. Um, and particularly if you're an entrepreneur, boy, do you ever have a lot to offer to Canada right now. So you're not alone means you, you don't have to sit there and deal with this on your own. But it also means you're not alone. So go next door and, and uh, or don't literally go next door, but pick up the phone and call somebody. So the Ontario government programs, these aren't really well formulated just yet. So I'm going to click through here. Hopefully everybody's uh, still able to see this. Okay. Um, this was just the easiest way to do it. Um, so the, for the support for our businesses in, from the province, um, there are uh, some tax deferrals that are going on. WSIB premium deferrals, uh, business education, property tax deferrals. This is, by the way, the... Um, uh, the Sorry, Brad. Yep. We can't see what you see. We just see a flag. Ah, okay. Well, that's, that's, that was working before and I guess it's not working now. So I can just, I can talk through it and, um, that's Try control click. Control. Or you can just click, uh, Alex says that you can fix that by clicking the share screen again. Just choose a different window. Oh, okay. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> oh, we almost got it. Yeah. Different window? I tried. Um, here we go. For whatever reason, it's not letting me do it. Um, yeah, because it worked okay, when we... We have some more tips here. Um, you must select to see the screen. Uh, so we can only see your presentation, not the whole screen. So you have to actually select the screen um, and maybe reshare. There. There we go. Excellent. Yep, we see what you're scrolling on now. I, I literally changed nothing. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, it's just one of those things. So uh, anyhow, so um, provincial tax deferrals on the, so I, this, this is from, uh, from uh, CFIB. Um, so it's, it's a great resource. Uh, if anybody needs the link, we'll make sure that, that it's there, but this is the, uh, for independent business in Canada. Um, and so, uh, Provincial tax deferrals on employer tax, um, which I'm not sure who that will apply to, but maybe we have some folks on there. WSIB premium deferrals, business education, property tax deferrals, employer health tax, property tax reassessments um, being conducted for the year, uh, 21 tax year. Um, and then they say they're coming out with uh, support for self-employment and support for employees. The, I know that the Ontario government was on there today, almost I think 
going right over top of this event um, with some new information. So hopefully some more will be coming out. They're certainly slower. The feds are certainly quicker on the uptake. And so we'll spend the majority of our time in there, but there are programs coming. Um, I know one of them is, uh, is uh, the rent um, deferment as well. Um, so whether you're renting uh, your space or uh, your business space or your, uh, or your uh, personal space, I know that that's coming as well. So hopefully this works as well. This one's, um, if everybody can just let me know, Mickey, if this is okay, so you can hop on there and just tell me that everybody's able to see this okay. I see it. Okay. We're good. So this, this, is, this is the big piece, right? This is the, the piece that, that most people are, are interested in. So the Canadian Emergency Wage Subsidy. Um, so the, uh, the federal government's providing a 75% uh, wage subsidy uh, to eligible small businesses. Um, who's eligible? Um, businesses, nonprofits, charities. Um, so this is the one and also the one that the government's really worried about people taking advantage of. And um, so, yeah, I mean, this is, this is a huge, uh, for a bunch of my farm clients uh, at, uh, at Innovation Guelph, you know, this is going to be really help their business out pretty significantly. Um, and I'll, uh, the next slide will have information about how to apply. Um, uh, the 10% uh, wage subsidy. Um, so this is, uh, and this is literally, they, they have put this up, this one, in the last... Uh, uh, hour or so. So this is a, a different one altogether. Um, and that's why I like to show this slide or this link because they do keep things really up to date and it's, it's really well done. So um, uh, Canadian controlled private corporation eligible small business deduction for not for profit registered charities and having existing business number and payroll program account with CRA um, uh, pay salaries and wages. Um, and other remunerations to an employee. So, okay, and, Brad, we have some questions coming in. Yeah, yeah, we definitely will. And so, let's uh, do, do we have a lot of questions? Because we uh, can just start. a couple that should be addressed here, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, that calculation is for a 10% subsidy, but isn't it now 75%? So, that this one, the 75% is here. This is the wage subsidy. That's why I'm saying this is obviously a brand new. This, Okay, so their calculation is just out of date then at the bottom. No, it, this is a new one. This it says 10% down below, sorry. Yeah, it is. So you, so you have the 75% and they've come up with another one, which is a 10% for a different reason. Does that make sense to everybody? So this is, my understanding is this is, this is why I use this site because they're keeping it up to date. There's a, this is a newly released, this wasn't on there yesterday. Mm -hmm. And it's just been released literally as we've been talking on the call. So I'm not so sure about the 10%. The wage subsidy that most people are looking at is a 75% wage subsidy to eligible small businesses. Um, okay. So the 10% is something new. Something new. Yeah, it's something new. And so uh, unfortunately, I don't have enough information on that right now to share too much about it. Um, but uh, certainly wait for something to come. Uh, um, I'm just going to ask you one more question, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, right here. Um, John's asking, uh, how, do you know how they're determining the 30% reduction in business? And what about businesses that were, um, what about business that was to happen but didn't because of COVID, uh, like the hospitality business? Yeah, that is, that is their dilemma, right? And so what you're hearing from everybody now is um, there's not going to be a calculation. So you, if you heard the prime minister today talking about we're going to trust Canadians, right? Now, they, I, I would suggest to you, <clears throat> if you're going to take advantage of the system, uh, it's going to be a challenge. Now, the problem is, and this is what I was thinking is, well, if I'm going to be aggressive, um, you know, and, and go after the market, I don't want to be penalized for that down the road. So when I get on my next uh, call federally, then, um, then these are questions that I'm going to be able to ask. So, these will be things that I that I can take away and and get answers from from these guys um, in the Canadian independent business. Um, so happy to answer those questions a little bit more as the information comes in. In the slides that are coming up, I literally changed them about thirty seconds before we got on because they have announced at least the date for these um, for the Canadian the wage subsidy um, is going to be April the sixth. Uh, it's going to come out at the same time as. 
um, as the uh, emergency be response benefit. But uh, does that answer the question, Mickey? I think so. Okay. I'll let you know if John or uh, Allison let me know it doesn't. But for right now, we can move on. Yep. So, and, and I'm in, in slides down a little bit further and we're, you know, we're not too far from the end here, folks. So, but, but stick with us because some of the information that's going to come out at the end will show you how this is actually working. I actually have user case situations that we've gone through that I can speak to specifically, um, but where we're able to use some of the, the, the tax filing and deferrals. Um, so these are, these are good tools and it's not, this isn't going to change your universe necessarily. Um, unless you have a really big HST deferral, um, which we had a couple of big ones, um, that seemed to help. But the reality is mortgage deferrals and, um, um, automobile deferrals, you know, they're all sort of helping and I'll show you what they total up to. Um, this is a, this is one that, you know, that every business owner in, in Canada should be applying for because you're affected in some way, manner, shape, or form. And the best way that I can articulate the Canadian Emergency Response Benefit or the CERB, in the US, they wrote a check to everybody for a couple thousand dollars. And regardless of financial situation, that was just the decision that they made. Canada took a little bit of a different tack on it and decided to use some of our existing um, systems, maybe like our ER, EI structure and um, some of the other things we have uh, to be able to deliver um, uh, payments to people instead of sending a check. So when you think of this, this is literally um, the Canadian emergency response benefit is um, EI for people who aren't eligible for EI. Uh, for small business owners, um, uh, sole props, um, all of that that have been affected by um, by uh, COVID-19. We want they want you to get through this, thrive and survive. They don't want anybody not being able to buy groceries. And so you may not be right up against the wall, but if this thing goes out six months, you know, some of the models are saying um, things are going to take six months to eight months to get to normal. Cash is going to be king. And so you would, you would like to, as much as possible, leverage the programs that the government has. As Canadians, this is super challenging, even though, the U.S. would consider us socialists. We're also super proud. And my experience from this is take the programs that you can get and use them because they're going to help you and your business survive. And if you have employees, it's going to help them survive as well. So I have business owners that have stopped collecting their, their, um, uh, their salary and they're going to be applying for this. Uh, so some, something to think about. Um, and then there'll be other CRM measures. So the, the child benefit plan, uh, that's coming an extra $300. Uh, for some of you, you may be happy that there's gonna be no more audits. So if you're in the middle of an audit, that's kind of nice. Uh, and collections on debits um, are, are also gonna be uh, paused. Um, the other ones are the, are the EI sickness plan. Um, so, I mean, this, this probably doesn't apply to a lot of people that are on this call unless you're paying yourself a salary or you, or you are sick. Um, but uh, for your employees, um, making sure that they're getting this and, and getting on this as quickly as possible. Um, and, and they, you know, they've, uh, they've waived a lot of the challenges around getting EI to make it as easy as possible because you do, and this is back to the investment piece, for your employees, part of if you are going to be taking some of the money from from some of the programs that exist from the governments, you want to be investing that in um, in your business, and you may need to invest that in HR because you may need to onboard your entire team uh, all over again. You you may need to do some marketing as well in order to find those people, and all these types of things are the places where I'm suggesting that you know you need to survive, but then you're also going to need to start planning for how you're gonna return as well. And then the last one is the, uh, this one here is the, or not the last one, but the, the work sharing program. This is a little bit more complicated um, and certainly we can get into it. I, I don't wanna to spend too much time on it, but this is a three-way agreement that can be negotiated with Service Canada. So um, we can certainly have a conversation about that. I'm not seeing a lot of that being used right now. Um, 
what I am seeing and what I've been really successful with has been the BDC work with the government financing. Um, so these uh, $100,000 loans, literally in my experience so far has been eight days um, from application to in the bank account. <clears throat> That's through BDC. And EDC also has a program as well. Um, that's obviously, they're, they're supporting um, the export groups and, and those types of things. Those have also been uh, very quick to happen as well. Um, my farmers, um, they've had success with um, getting their interest deferred. They've, they, when they have a 0% interest, they're getting their, um, uh, their amounts increased pretty successfully with Farm Credit Canada. So that's an interesting one as well. Um, and uh, yeah, a number of other programs there that are, that are of interest if we have anybody who's in the, in the farming business as well. So, uh, and then this is the new one that's just coming out. And my understanding is it's supposed to be rolled out April the 6th as well. I literally was just on the phone with Scotiabank and RBC at, um, at the high, just at the highest levels. And uh, um, because they're trying to figure out how they're rolling this out as well. The key ingredient to this is going to be, um, you know, you have to have a payroll of 50000 and a million in order to be eligible for the $40,000. And then you'll have a, you could have up to $10,000 of loan forgiveness in there as well. So uh, there is, and I'll, I'll just click back into the slideshow um, because there's literally um, more information literally about this and in there and, and I don't know if everybody remembers like the choose your own adventure books. That's, that's part of what you're going to have to go through in the next little bit. We get you the information, you start to think about it, and then you have to start to be able to make choices based on what your business is eligible for um, and, and why that makes sense. And the big takeaway that I want everybody to have here is that you're going to be eligible probably more often than, than you realize. And so it is a worthwhile exercise to go through mainly because we don't know how long this is all gonna last. And the government does want you to survive. They want you to thrive. So this is a, um, a what looks like sort of a complicated structure here, but uh, it's, it's really not. Um, uh, it was meant to uh, give everybody sort of an idea of, of oh, denied me. So, I don't know if everybody can see my cursor here, but um, uh, so employed, recently employed, you qualify for EI. If no, you end up in this bucket here of the Canadian Emergency Response Benefits Plan. So once again, if you're a small business person, self-employed contractor, um, this is what this program is for, is the uh, Emergency Response Benefits. The qualifications, you have to be over 14 years old um, and earn $5,000 in 2000, <clears throat> 2019. That's all. Um, and the, everything will be done in a similar way to uh, the way that you receive your tax payments uh, from CRA or where you, where, you, where you get your refund from or if you've ever been on EI before. Um, the funding that we've seen so far that's been successful um, has been, uh, we're averaging about $75,000 uh, and we're averaging about a uh, eight day turnaround to deposit, which um, like hopefully people are excited about that. Um, the, the loan rate is, is uh, uh, a variable loan, but it's uh, uh, at 3.3%, which for anybody who's borrowed money from BDC before is a, is a very good rate. Um, and it could fluctuate up to five eventually. Um, so we've had good success with this. Um, the mortgage and loan and credit deferrals, the child benefit, you know, it's not a huge thing, but it, it's something. Um, EI, we've had success with people doing that with their employees and really delighting their employees by taking the time. Most of you, I'm sure, are, are, are holding people's hands through this because sometimes people aren't great at applying for that stuff. Sometimes they are. The GST, uh, HST remittances, and then farm programs as well. Um, so as I said, the, the farmers are, you know, they're really critical to us right now. Um, and, and so, uh, um, for them, it's actually a, a really big opportunity 
and the, an opportunity for them to start to invest in their businesses pretty significantly. You know, we've all seen for years, and because of Innovation Guelph, I think this is one of the reasons why it's such a great opportunity for Innovation Guelph and what we're doing. You know, we've seen those bumper stickers that say, um, you know, uh, farmers feed cities. Well, the reality now is that that those are the people when we're going to the grocery store or if you're part of a CSA uh, locally or something along those lines. And if you're not, if you don't know what a CSA is, so it's just a, a food sharing program, Google CSA in your area and look it up because the farmers are going to have access to fresh produce or are, are creating fresh produce. And um, some of them are already starting to um, uh, push out uh, product, which is great because some of them have started their greenhousing. So uh, I think we have uh, one of our clients, um, uh, they have a, a, a market coming up at some point in the next little while, um, and they're going to be doing uh, delivery, uh, so a specialized structure for delivery. Um, um, good. Brad, I'm just going to interrupt just a little bit. I'm going to do a time check with you. There's 19 minutes left on the call. And yep. I, a lot of questions are coming in, so I want to make sure we get to them all. Mm -hmm. um, Sounds so good. So I'm pretty much done. Uh, we're, we're pretty much done here. I'm just going to show the use cases. That may answer some of those questions, and that should leave us plenty of time for uh, to answer questions. How's that sound? Sure. That sounds good. Good. I'll move right into like the, the, this, the use cases that we're seeing so far. So this is after me walking through the... Uh, the um, response canvas with uh, people figuring out what they want to do, deciding what they want to apply for. We're averaging about a seventy-five thousand um, dollar BCAP um, uh, loan um, at three point three percent. The employment support measures. I've just that's coming. It's coming April the sixth. That was announced today. So I put that in here. We're saying that's happening because it's also retroactive. Um, the tax deferral, so we've had pretty good success on tax deferrals so far, um, uh, paying tax, we're averaging like a $12,000 in, in tax deferrals, mortgage deferral about 18,000 because it's 16, it's six months of deferral. Now, if you can afford to keep your mortgage going, uh, there would be a case to make that you, you do that because, uh, there's the interest isn't awesome and I'm hoping the government's going to come up with a program for that but we shall see but still nowadays cash is king um, and the auto deferral you know like if you have a lease or or a uh, loan um, you know so we're, we're totaling um, $81,000 in cash um, this is before the 75% program because I didn't want to put that in here because it complicates things and then, uh, so $81,000 in cash in, and then in your deferrals, you're looking at $35,000, uh, 35,952 uh, for an average cash flow effect of uh, 117,702. These are important numbers. I didn't even put in the child benefits and some of the things just because they, you know, they wouldn't have made a big impact. So hopefully that tells people, this is really why I was working so hard in the last 10 days was to start to gather some metrics from this. Like I literally did this for my own little side consulting business that I do nothing with that's, um, that hasn't earned very much in the last number of years. And I did the application so I would understand. And the turnaround was seven days. And uh, that business uh, is not profitable. It didn't have a lot of uh, revenue to it. $13,000 two years ago and uh, $54,000 uh, the year after that. But we do have a project that we're looking at doing with it. And BDS, BDC applied it. The girl was wonderful and um, was very interested in what we were doing. And it was, uh, and it was applied. Uh, it was in, after I met with her, it was in our bank account uh, two days later. So you know, that's, the, that is the one program that I can say is, is be operating very efficiently. What we're waiting on, Canada emergency wage subsidy, 75%, 30% 30 reduction in revenue is how you are eligible. John, great question. Um, that's that's going to be, that's the big um, 10 or $10 billion question is uh, how they're going to be able to prove that. So I think the idea is be aggressive and apply and uh, try to go through that process. Um, but once again, Evaluate your own business and see where you are. Are you in a situation where you're worried about dying? You know, maybe you don't apply. You don't need any more headaches on your plate. 
are you in a position to survive? Okay, well, maybe we're going to look at if you're in a position to thrive, then, then I think you absolutely have to because you need to stand up that workforce as quickly as possible. Uh, the Canadian uh, Emergency Response Benefit, the CER, CERB, um, so that's the uh, $1,000 every two weeks, um, self-employed and sole proprietors eligible. It's coming out April 6th. We, ha we haven't done that. It was in my last slide, so not to confuse everybody, but that's, that's what that is. The Canadian Emergency uh, Business Account, this is probably the one that people have also heard about is the, the $40,000 interest per free first year but you have to have a payroll of 50,000 to a million. Great program, uh, great program for the restaurants. Um, and they just need to turn it around pretty quickly and the banks are doing the best they can. And then I have heard, I don't know if I have any restaurants on, but I, I know when I, I was on a call yesterday that the restaurants are coming up with their own separate um, program because they, um, they have no cash flow. And uh, you're just gonna see 80% of restaurants just go the way of the dodo. And that impact is on farmers and you know, everybody gets affected by that. That has a trickle down effect on the economy. And the other thing we're waiting on is our provincial government. So I wanna go and look at the, the meeting from today, but I, I would like to see them, particularly on the rent, I'd like to see them do something there. Um, and I know the federal government's pushing pretty hard. So Mickey, that is, um, that is that is all the funding stuff and so that's a good place to stop to answer questions about funding and remember i am i'm not an expert on these programs i've just spent a bunch of time with people that are experiencing them and uh trying to then actually apply them so that i could eventually have this conversation with a group of people and say to them this is how it's actually happening because i just find so much is happening philosophically <laughs> Right. So fast too, right? Absolutely. And and everything seems like vapor, right? Vaporware right now. We call them the software business. They say they're coming out with these programs, but they're not coming, and they're not coming, and they're not coming. So I want people to get excited and say, look, you know, if if I want to move, there's some stuff that I can move on. And particularly, BDC is being exceptionally responsive. Okay. So there's a couple of questions. Um, let's try to get through all of them. If we can, we're going to jump around a little bit in your presentation, though. That's okay. um, Move around. So have you uh, heard about any business subsidy that is not wage subsidy? So no employees, but high lease costs, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's the one that's so that somebody will might mimic that with the, the restaurant. I think there's 200 restaurant owners all over Canada. And that group is that's turning into a lobby group mm -hmm. um, and they're growing quickly. So I would say that <laughs> it's not just the restaurants that are uh, that are going to be in that all of a sudden they've gone to zero cash flow uh, overnight. Mm -hmm. Not everybody can be takeout. There's going to be other businesses that are in the exact same boat. So the suggestion and one of the concerns the government has is, okay, we open the doors for the restaurants. What happens to everybody else? Right. And then what happens when say a um, company closes that there's like a subsequent impact on the smaller business? So yeah. if somebody was going to sell to the larger company and they were to close, what happens to them? Does it, can, can that be something that is considered a loss of income or um, that kind of, can, can they qualify for something? Yeah. I mean, like literally they're, they're going to be super flexible on that side. Um, so I, I think what we're talking about here is the, um, is probably the, uh, the Canadian emergency response benefit. Is that, what they're asking about possibly yes I was thousand dollars every two weeks they're going to be wildly flexible about this like think of it like EI for people who can't get EI like they just don't want people not having money to buy groceries and it doesn't matter if you if you're if you're used to making a million dollars a year and now you're making um, you know a hundred thousand dollars there's going to be some pains there for you and the government wants you to survive. They don't want you struggling, you know, a thousand dollars a month may not help, but it's what they can do. Right. Um, okay. So next question. Um, going through everybody's, I hope I get to everybody's quickly enough. Um, do we have to give the employee a layoff? to qualify for CERB. So they've not worked 
but we've not done anything yet. So one employee has applied for EI, but we didn't officially lay him off. Uh, and he was trying to get ahead of the game and apply. So he's a contractor. So, so I mean, so you, first see, of all, let me see if I can, um, Kathy, I'm going to, are, are you still here, Kathy? Kathy, I'm going to unmute you, Kathy. Maybe you can ask your question. I think I unmuted you. You there, Kathy? Thank you. Yes, thank you. So yeah, uh, that's right. Um, we have not worked since um, the um, the mandatory shutdown. So the employee went ahead to apply for EI because of the backlog, mm -hmm. um, but we're not given him an uh, layoff or ROE because the expectations were, well, we'll probably be okay. And as time is going on, of course, it's looking less and less likely. So now he's going to be automatically rolled into the CERB, I'm assuming, but we've not given him any ROE. Do we have to provide him an ROE at all or no? So, so he's an employee of the business. He's not a contractor. That's correct. He's an employee. And are, are you considering keeping operations going or not? We don't know. We hope so. That's just the thing. It, it's like, it just depends on how things pick up. Yeah. So, so let's say maybe a better way to look at it is like this. Um, so, you know, in the next two weeks or if by April the 6th, the government's going to pick up 75% of his salary. Um, would that help you? Retroactive to March, uh, mid-March? Well, I guess, I guess the thing is, is right now, when we project out, we don't know where we're going to be at and whether or not we're going to be able to continue with our operations to be able to accommodate his, um, his payroll. Therefore, I don't know when we'll be able to call him back personally. So th this slide is, is pr probably really good for you. And, and I think um, just so everybody knows, this is um, just to not leave everybody hanging here. Um, so there is gonna be, you're gonna be able to book a, a free one hour uh, COVID consultation with one of Innovation Guelph's mentors. So Kathy, this might okay. be a, a good example of, of a situation to, to do that because um, it, it all depends on your market, right? Like this is why y you have to be the one that assesses your business, but I do not want you doing that in a vacuum. Uh, you need to do that with somebody who has experience going through something like this. And like, I, this is nothing, this is very different than the financial crisis. But if you were in the financial crisis and you were running a business at that time, <laughs> we had never seen anything like it before in our lifetime either. And it was a little bit less hopeless because it wasn't one for all or all for one. There was a major failure of our government, right? And so uh, um, it's different, but the same, but modeling was really um, uh, was really challenging also because you just didn't know how it was going to respond. So if we could take it offline. That would probably be amazing um, because I'm not even sure that he, he qualifies for the CERB, for the, for the Canadian Emergency Response Benefit. You, cause you okay. can't. You can't, you can't apply for both. You can't have both those programs. Uh, and once you're in one, you can't apply for the other because it's only there for 15 weeks. It's the same as EI. <clears throat> Thanks, Kathy. There was someone here saying that he should have been uh, given an ROE. So we can, as you said, Brad, explore that a little bit later. We have lots of people uh, that can definitely help with um, understanding and navigating that side of Yeah, like the, the first thing. Send me an email, is, Kathy. Sorry, just send me an email, Kathy, and I'll, I'll get that um, consultation set up, okay? Yep, thank you. The, the first thing for Kathy is is to start thinking about what her strategy is, right? Because I don't know, it's hard, like, it's hard to have a conversation if you don't understand what their market is. Like, some businesses are going to have to make the tough call and just say, you know what, it's, it's maybe not worth continuing. True. So, um, Let's see. Um, trying to think. Uh, people like the sign behind you. <laughs> yeah, it's backwards the way that I look at it. But. Uh, I have a question to jump in here with Brad as well. Sure. Um, so we have someone uh, talking about a small business. They have a payroll under 50,000 and they've laid off four staff 
And since they're not taking a salary themselves as the business owner uh, in order to further invest in the business, does this become an accounting question as they do my 2019 year end so that they can qualify for these benefits? Yeah, a great question. Thank you very much. Uh, I didn't catch whoever's name that was, but it sounds like a familiar voice. Um, <laughs> that was Wes. Oh, Wes, that's why it sounds familiar. Um, so, uh, uh, Absolutely. I mean, so remember I talked about um, great time to delight your clients. If you have an accountant who hasn't reached out to you by now, you should start shopping for a new accountant. Like these programs should, some of these programs should absolutely be coming from them. It's a great, like it's a great example of business people that, that are taking the opportunity to get in front of things. And I get that they're busy, but you're their client and, and uh, you know, if they value you highly, uh, they should be sharing these things out. So absolutely, this is a lot of these things are accounting questions. So once we have that session where we take it offline, um, we may refer you out or we may refer you back to your own accountant to ask questions because the complexities here are significant. Uh, the big thing that we want everybody walking away from today is that there is opportunity in this marketplace right now to, to move things forward. That may not apply to you. So you have to make a mature decision about, about your business and, and where it's at and understand. And uh, Brad, just as another quick follow-up to that particular question, can you hire back those laid off staff at a lower per hour wage? No. Yeah, so that's that's been protected. That was one of the protections that was put in by the province anyways. And uh, so this is where the lawyers are going to start to have a great time with all this, but employment lawyers are going to be all over that situation because there absolutely will be employers that try to do that. And the, uh, the Ontario government has already laid down the line on that, um, you know, and, and, uh, and trying to hold people's feet to the fire already. Uh, but it's a great question. So there's okay. a question as well. Um, mandatory for businesses to come up with the remaining 25% to get to the full 100% rehiring employees. So what say say that again, Mickey. So is it mandatory for the businesses to come up with the remaining 25% for the 75% for the um, money that they're getting from the government to pay for the 100% of the salary? What if they don't have that 25%? Yeah, it's not mandatory. And the government's asking you if you can do it. Um, to do it, but the 75, you, you don't need to do it. And so eventually that's what they're talking about. There's going to be a, a challenge down the road. The lawyers are going to have a field day with this. And it's why they're working on the modeling for it. Um, and it's one of the reasons why, you know, there's some that would say it was better just to write everybody a check for things. Um, but particularly on the, on the wage subsidy, it really helps certain business owners. But can they hire the person back and pay them only 75% and it's the 75% that they're getting from the government? Yeah, that's going to be like my interpretation of it is that that's a negotiation you're going to have with your employee, right? So at the end of the day, this is where, you know, with your client, your, your employees as well, you have to be a business leader and you have to have a conversation and say, look, you know, either I'm going to put you on EI and, uh, or I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to lay you off or I'm, I can pay you 75% because I can't afford the other 25 you know, now if you're driving into work in your Lamborghini and you just bought another one, um, you know, like uh, your employee is going to have a challenge to that and that's going to make them question your personal brand. Um, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, if they can prove that they couldn't have afforded it, uh, then they're going to be okay in the eyes of the government. Um, so my understanding is that's a, that's a negotiation with your employee. Yeah, I think there's some more questions on that, but we do have an HR um, session like this coming up uh, next week. I believe it's next Friday. So on that note, because it is 3.59, we can keep this call open so we can continue some questions with Brad. But Brad, if you could just move through a couple slides for me. No problem. Um, so the next steps right now, uh, can you go to the next steps? There is a, uh, nope, yeah, that one. Uh, BDO uh, is a trusted resource of Innovation Wealth and has been for quite some time and helped out a lot of our clients. They are doing a cash flow strategy and government incentive um, session for an hour on April the 3rd, which is in two days. There's a link here, which you can copy down, or I will include in an email to all of you later. I would um, highly suggest you jump on that call. I'll be able to answer a lot of questions. Um, 
think there's about six or seven different experts from all over their business and different strains that can uh, answer some questions and help you there. And then Brad mentioned, you go to the next slide, Brad. Brad mentioned that we are giving away a one hour free COVID-19 consultation with one of our mentors and specialists. So if any of you on the call would like to talk to someone uh, specifically about your business and your plan and get some, some advice, then we'll, we'll do that for free for an hour with you. Um, and then we'll take a look and see what else, um, you know, we have to offer you and help you uh, or any connections that we can make for you to help life be a little bit easier during this time. Because uh, definitely we are stronger together, yeah. right? So um, I believe that's the last slide, right, Brad? Is there anything else after that? Um, just if they had any questions regarding that's you. Yeah. That's, that's okay. Sure, sure Brad. Uh, Anybody that has to leave, these are our next sessions. We have Maintaining Common Resilience, which is a mental health focus on Friday from 11 to 1230. Um, highly important if you have anyone for yourself, for any one of your employees, for anyone that you work with, for your family going through this, this kind of uh, COVID-19 storm, as, as uh, Paul calls it. Um, but then we also are moving on to a product development and crisis. So this is continuing innovation through a crisis. How do you continue through this? And how do you collaborate with others potentially to help others through this? We have an HR culture leadership implication happening on April 9th. We have a PR strategy, so helping you with your communication and your PR um, on April 15th. And then we're going to do a business leader panel. So we're going to take all of these business owners who have been through crisis in the past and come through. So they'll be able to um, motivate you and tell good stories and lessons and share things with you. We're all about uh, learning from leaders and learning from uh, people who are in through situations and have lessons to teach. So we'll be doing that on April 17th. So if you have to go, thank you for coming today. Thank you to all of our um, sponsors and our partners and to Brad. We appreciate you coming and uh, hope you can join us for some of our other sessions. And if you'd like to stick around and ask Brad some questions, you can start to uh, chat with him directly. Um, probably get a faster response than going through me. Uh, <laughs> but I am still here. You can ask me questions um, or Wes or Brad. And we will make sure that we get as much answered as we can in the next little while. Does that sound? Thanks, Mickey. And thank you to Mickey and, and thanks to Wes as well um, for, for putting this on and, um, and getting it together uh, because that's, that's great stuff that, uh, that we have this forum. So why don't we, uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, saying thanks and good sessions and thank you Brad this is wonderful um, I really uh, think that that's great it's been a great great time here if any of you have any questions hands up works or chat whichever you like if you want to put your hands up we'll kind of unmute you and you can have a conversation uh, that might be a faster way to get through it oh Allison has something she wants to say hi Brad how are you I'm great Allison how are you Good, good, thanks. I just wanted to share, and it sounds like um, you are aware of this already as well, but just in your sort of experience, I guess. I reached out via email to my small business advisor at my bank um, yesterday, which is TD, and um, he shared that it is at least two to three weeks before they're going to be ready to accept applications for the $40,000 um, small business loan, FYI. Okay. So that's TD. I didn't talk to TD yet today, but uh, Scotia and Royal uh, both indicated, you know, uh, they're, they're literally in, um, uh, they were showing us the questionnaires on PowerPoint today um, and they're ready to populate their website. So they're trying to do it in line with the other programs that are coming out on the 6th of April. Um, but maybe, maybe TD's estimates are better. I'm not sure. Because uh, that, that sure feels like the most important one right now. Um, because if you're, you know, it, it really is designed for you to, to, to run your payroll and keep people on. So um, I think it'd be great if they hustled up. But thanks for that, Allison. No problem. And Brad, I have another question in front of me here. 
Um, if we launched our company in July 2019 and we haven't taken a salary yet and therefore didn't make the minimum 5,000 last year, where does that leave us? Yeah, great question. Uh, I mean, I would still apply um, for, for that program because they're going to have, they've said it from the start, they're going to have great flexibility in that and you may just have to explain your situation a little bit. Um, quite literally, this is designed to replace um, what they did in the US by just writing everybody a check. And so that would be a perfect example of why the writing the check thing could make sense because now you might have to go through a little bit of an explanation. Um, but it is designed for, um, for sole proprietors. So uh, I, would ex I would expect that you, that you would get that um, uh, if, uh, if you apply. Okay, perfect. Uh, Pam has a couple of questions, so I'm just going to get her going here. Okay. How are you doing? That was great. Thanks, Pam. Thanks. Um, I have multiple businesses and a real opportunity as I pivot from being a primary restaurant and marketplace. I've closed the restaurant and I'm pivoting to a gourmet to go delivery service of fully prepared meals. So good with that. I also have a junior chef program, which can funnel into one of my other businesses. So I'm just wondering as a multiple business owner, uh, has there been any sort of conversation or inclination around what that means with any of these government incentives? Uh, yeah, so, um, uh, so I, I personally, I have a couple of corporations myself. And so as you heard me say, I did an application to BDC uh, out of a, a corp that I do something else with. Um, and that was successful. So, you know, I would say that's, you know, if you're looking for um, investment income, uh, this is literally like when we're on the calls, this is what they're talking about. They're hoping that people have an entrepreneurial spirit and they're saying, right. look, I'm going to go and create something new. And I'm going to use this and uh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to leverage everything that's there. Um, and, and at the end of the day, worst case scenario, they're going to challenge you on it and you just have to defend it. Um, yeah. uh, which, I, yeah. I see an opportunity to transfer some of the staff that I haven't, that were contract staff to be able to sort of, if I can figure out how to use two of my three businesses at least, yeah. to transfer some of my staff to maintain my building and deal with some of the operational costs for the next year as I get through this and then bring back some of my staff that are laid off that can execute the swing from restaurant to home delivery service for vulnerable people that need food during the crisis of COVID, then yeah. I think there's huge opportunity. I just don't, I, I don't know how to navigate that. So I'm really grateful to hear there's this hour that's being available to us. And I'm gonna, I've already sent Mickey an email. Okay, thank you. Terrific, yeah, pleasure. Um, hey Brad, is BDC the only route for loans for small business people with payroll under $50,000? That's all I've seen so far. Um, yeah, so, uh, and, and, and they're, they're moving it along pretty quickly. You can actually, there are, they also have loans over a million as well. Um, but that's, that's the one that, that's been really effective so far. And the link is online. Like you can really action that immediately. So yeah, there's, there's, there's not a lot of calls out there. Any other questions? That's all I've got over here. So I got here and I think people are starting to, to go. So I'll just reiterate, if you guys um, want to sit down and talk to someone for an hour, no matter where you are or who, who you are, um, we'll sit down and chat with you for an hour and just figure out if there's another way that we can help you or connect you with someone who can. Um, Brad mentioned uh, Innovation Guelph is really trying to uh, figure out, uh, I mean, individually, like we're, we're trying to figure out how to navigate the storm for our own selves. Um, but there definitely uh, are plenty of ways that we can um, band together, either on our own with our other regional innovation centers, with our amazing partners and sponsors, uh, to build ways um, to help you. So the free consultation is a really great start. Uh, we'll look at building um, together maybe some kind of a, a COVID program to help you 
um, discounted. So you're not uh, paying a whole lot to, to access the help either. So uh, just stay tuned for that in the next little while. Um, but unless any of you have any questions or Brad, if you have anything else you wanna say, I think uh, we might close off the phone call. Sure. No, no, no I, I have said enough. So uh, <laughs> the, 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 uh, the only thing that I think maybe would be good since we still have 17 people on would be if, if you do know people that, um, that have businesses that, um, uh, that can benefit people, I think Innovation Guelph can also be a good place to champion some of those businesses as well. Um, because the worst thing right now is there's businesses out there that, that are, that can help people with, uh, dealing with COVID and people don't necessarily know about it. And, um, Innovation Guelph is a, a great repository. That's how we got to the 60 people that were on this call. Right. So it's terrific. That's great. Okay. So reach out to us if you need anything. My email address is up on the screen right now. Please feel free to email me and, uh, we'll connect and help and and uh, see what we can do, okay? Uh, hopefully you have a very healthy and happy day and join us for one of the other sessions that we have going on in the next couple of weeks. Have a great day, everybody.